Hi, um, welcome back to my channel. Now, um, I know I haven't posted a video in um, three months, like I promised four months ago. Um, I actually wanted to post a video last month, but some unexpected things kind of pop on my radar. And yeah, so I realized that I should have changed the um, new video in three months part of the header to uh, maybe new video uh, whenever I feel like it. <laughs> Nevertheless, um, here is a video, um, and today's video is quite a special one. As you can see, I'm wearing batik or like batik, however, however you want to say it. Um, and today is also the day that I'm celebrating eight or like celebrating Raya, not with my family. A little bit sad, but um, an experience regardless. Um, yeah, and also if you're watching this video uh, a little bit later after eight, it's probably because I'm too lazy to edit this video. So sorry for that. Um, actually, um, I'm trying to give a little more effort into this YouTube thing. Um, and so I've made a new intro, you'll see that in a moment. And in the future, maybe I'll try to post, if not always, at least consistent, right? Um, let's say one video every two weeks or one video um, every month. Um, <laughs> we'll see how that goes. But yeah, just to create a proper presence, like a proper brand for this channel. So. Roll the new intro. Okay, so at first I was planning to make a video explaining the whole architecture of the game engine like um, do a video to explain the ECS, right, the, the Entity Component System. Uh, but I realized halfway that um, explaining the ECS isn't easy and you can't really, um, you can't really explain it in like a, a 10 minutes video, for example. Um, so let us take a bottom up approach moving forward. So um, I'll make this kind of video, like these short videos where I only explain uh, one particular aspect or like one small aspect of the game engine and then um, like for example like today I'm going to be explaining the game loop and maybe next time I'll be explaining the um, collision system or the animation system keyboard mouse control and later down the line I'll make a um, ECS video and we can see how everything connects cool um, in the meantime, uh, if you want to know how ECS works and how you can program it yourself, um, I mean, thanks to the internet, the world is your oyster. So I've, I, I will leave a couple of links that I use down in the description. Um, but man, Google is your library of Alexandria. <laughs> now, um, I know from the last video, I talked about how I want to work on the um, reanimation, but it has taken so much of my time. <laughs> and I'm still not done with it, by the way. Um, yeah, so I took a pause on that and um, focused more on the programming side, which is what I wanted to do in the first place, right? Um, rather than just doing art. <laughs> Though, to be fair, programming is also kind of an art. Um, I mean, what is an art anyway? Anyway, um, actually, I wanted to give a little bit of update on the collision system that I'm working on for this game engine. Um, but I think before I talk about the collision system, uh, what they are and why they are needed in the game engine, uh, let's first talk about the most basic thing in the game engine. And that is the game loop, right? The video game loop. So what is a video game loop? So I think the easiest way to understand this is by first understanding what a video is, right? So a video is a sequence of images, like a sequence of frames. And these frames are are being displayed to your screen one by one at a certain frequency. Um, okay, take out your phone, um, open the camera app and hold on the shutter button, like hold on the shutter button as long as you want. See, the sequences of frames displayed to your screen one by one at a certain frequency. Now you have a video. Now if you have less frequency, the choppier the video gets and the reverse is true. Now this is what FPS, like frames per second, is all about. 
So how many frames are displayed on the screen every second? Um, now, how is the video game different, right? Um, so with a video, the next uh, frame or the next images or the next hundreds of frames uh, in the sequence is already there, right? So when, when a computer is displaying a video, the computer just need to fetch the next image or the next frame in the sequence and then display it on the screen. So the process repeats. So fetch, display, fetch, display, fetch, display until the end of the sequence, right? Which is the end of the video. Um, but with a video game, um, it's not a video. Okay, okay, it's video. Um, hold up. At least it's a video for you, right? Because you are looking at the screen, um, but not for the computer. So when you play a game, um, everything happens instantly. So it looks like a video, right? But on the inside, for the computer, it's not so easy because um, unlike just showing a video, for a video game, the whole sequence of frames is actually incomplete because the next frame in the sequence, the next image in the sequence depends on the will of the player who controls the character which in turn control the outcome of the next frame, which in turn controls the outcome of the video. And the process repeats. So this is what the video game loop basically is. I'm using C++, but whichever um, programming language you use, your main program should contain this kind of loop. Instead of just fetching and displaying the next frame in the sequence like a video, the computer needs to do some extra steps, which is the computer needs to first get inputs or process every input from the player, either by the keyboard and the mouse or by a controller, then using these inputs to say update the character position or see whether uh -huh, now the player is taking some damage from, I don't know, some enemy. Um, and from these updates, then will the next frame be drawn or be rendered. So these steps happen 30 or 60 times every second, depending on your FPS, until you break the loop by either game over or um, by simply pressing the close button. Oh, it started to get dark outside. Where was I? Yeah. Okay. So this is why we need um, a beefy processor or like a separate um, processing using a graphics card or a fast programming language like C and C++ um, to run and to make video games because each of the frames in the sequence need to be um, drawn and need to be rendered 30 or 60 times per second depending on FPS um, by the computer. Um, yeah. And this is also why we usually need like a stronger graphics card to run higher FPS, right? Like today we have um, game running at 120 or 240, though I don't really know why like uh, why we need that kind of like FPS. So um, that is the game loop, right? Uh, I'm, I'm kind of not feeling well right now. So I, I think that's all for today's video, guys. Um, just to end this video, <laughs> um, Think about this. Every second in your life, you're making decisions. So for example, am I going to look at this painting? Am I going to drink this tea? Or am I going to just sit on the couch reading a book? Now, thanks to your free will, you're free to choose which of these paths you like to take. But once the decision is made, the next frame, or you could say your frame of mind, <laughs> is rendered. And that becomes your reality. And the cycle repeats just like the game loop. But for an observer, outside of the computer, someone outside of time, every decision you made has been determined. It cannot be imagined with our three-dimensional brain, of course, but everything is just another video, with the frames already there. Every choice is determined. Well, the video is a hyper-dimensional one at least, but still, with an end. So in philosophy, this is called compatibilism. And in the next five minutes of this video, I'm going to go through this concept, this philosophical concept. <laughs> Joking. Bye.